blimp going over. There's the, the, an occasional plane that goes down while my son's playing baseball at the field. Um, we can put up with an occasional item, but this every single day of stinking, loud, screeching has to come to an end. Anything that your information can do to empower the politicians is appreciated. The community, I mean, we have the neighbors immediately adjacent to the airport listening to these large, heavy, fast jets coming in, putting on reverse thrusters and screeching to a halt, bringing people's phone conversations to a halt, ruining their day, waking up kids, just terrible noise. That's just one side. I'm in the downwind leg for most of the small planes, personally. And it's when there's wave offs of the large jets who've been lined up since they were over Rancho Park Golf Course, getting clearance, coming in, and some little plane comes into the runway or taxis too close to the runway and gets a wave off call. He's full throttle, he's peeling off at an angle, and he's going directly over our neighborhood due south of the airport. That's the most dangerous part of the large jets. I agree we need to deal with the run on or run off, but also when they have a wave off, their landing gear's down, they're full throttle, and they're screeching out into an area that's got little planes coming just the opposite direction. This is dangerous stuff, and it's going to land on our neighborhood. Um, so with regards to the fuel, the additive idea is interesting. But more importantly, we can't let Santa Monica make their port the playground of the rich, famous, and well-to-do, and then we have to put up with all the noise, stink, and trouble. I Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Hi, I'm Susan Follett. I live about a half a mile east of the Santa Monica Airport. I've been a resident in my neighborhood for about nine years. I've been familiar with the neighborhood and spent much of my time in the neighborhood prior to that because that's where my grandparents lived. Uh, security, health, safety, they're three peas in a pod. Without one of them, the other two are compromised. And, and we know that, and we've seen that, and we've smelled it ever since 9-11. Those people who don't want to deal with security are coming into Santa Monica Airport. I live just a couple blocks from Marty and Joan, right around the corner from Deborah and Alberto, whose son has cancer. I was diagnosed with cancer two weeks ago. Oh, and I know there's a study that can focus on the jet kerosene. And I am sick and tired of people trying to railroad this from happening. And I don't want to disrespect anybody for all these wonderful, wonderful studies they've done in the past, but they're all BS. And I want to see that modeling study done. And I want to thank everybody who's lent support for it. And I want to tell those people who have not yet to please get busy and do so. Thank you. I'm very sorry to hear of your diagnosis, too. My name is Gwen Reinhardt. I've lived for 30 years, just about a half mile east of the airport. Uh, the first 20 years were great. The last 10 years have just gotten worse and worse until it's really intolerable the way the jets scream in. They break their curfews for, well, they don't have a technical curfew, but they're asked not to come in. After 11, they come in at 2 and 3 sometimes and pay a little fee. Um, I want to thank this panel for supporting Ted Lou's bill. For, and I want to thank especially Bill Piazza for his great ideas about a modeling study. I hope that happens. Uh, the one thing that uh, Dr. Ospital said that it was hard for science to separate out the, those 
those jet fumes from the other stuff that's happening, well, it's not hard for the residents to separate out. We know exactly what it is, and it's not just a bad smell, it's a toxic smell. When you're inhaling stuff and it gives you a headache and your throat's burning, that's not just a bad smell. A dog can leave something that's a bad smell, but it doesn't feel like it's going to poison you, and that's the difference. This is really toxic stuff. And maybe a nose is a finer tuned instrument than some of the scientific stuff that can't separate it out. That's maybe possible. So thank you for being here and helping us. And thank you, Marty and Bill and, and Ted Lou and everybody that's really trying to help this. It's more than just the pollution that we smell, though. It's the sound pollution, which studies out of Europe are talking about elevated blood pressure and all that kind of stuff. And that's how you torture people. Loud noise, that's a torture device. Waking people up when they're sleeping, that's a torture device. So we're kind of being tortured, not on purpose, but just as, as you know, something that makes it convenient for people that are making money or have private jets to fly in and out of the airport. So thank you for your help. Hi, my name is uh, Keith Akiyama, and this is the first time that I've come to a meeting of this sort, and I just have to say that I am very impressed and uh, very, um, well, just surprised and, and happily so by the good hard work and the dedication and all the people who are coming out and all the, uh, the officials who are coming out to support this. And, uh, but at the same time, frustrated by, by you know, the, uh, the progress that's been made. Um, I would like to say, I live um, about 25 yards away from the intersection of National and uh, Sentinella, so I would say that the, the jet exhaust is about 50 yards away from our door, and so we have our door coming <laughs> when the jets, jets are taken off. Uh, the wind is right, it's almost coming right into our house, and it's just, uh, it's very noxious. And um, I'd like to say that the airport um, is becoming an in increasingly dangerous monster. It breathes its cancerous breath over our community, and its talons are gripping increasingly tighter around us. And it's just a matter of time before more and, pe more and more people will die from it. I have lived in West LA my entire life, and I've been a homeowner in the Mar Vista area for the last 12 years. Um, I'm going to focus mainly on the noise pollution aspect of it. Uh, we've heard a lot about the, the horrible effects of the, of the fumes and, and the, uh, the cancerous um, Potentially cancerous effects of the fumes, and, uh, and you know, I haven't. I, we, my wife and I, we we haven't even explored that as far as what may be happening to us, and that's just terrifying. But um, we've tried to adapt to the area. We've put uh, dual pane windows on all of our you know, changed uh, changed to all dual pane windows, and that's helped a bit. Uh, but still, as soon as you leave the house, the noise can just be deafening. And uh, because of the airport noise pollution and because of the, the noxious fumes, uh, we have decided, as uh, the second gentleman said earlier, that uh, we just need to move out of the area. And, um, but ironically, the airport will not let us leave. And what I mean by that is that when we've had our open houses, I know that this, is a, this has been a tough time to sell, but uh, when we've had our open houses on the weekends, that's when jet traffic is the worst. And the number one reason people have said that uh, they do that they won't buy our place is because of the of the jet traffic, because of all of the noise. And so, to add on to the all of the the more significant problems of the health and the noise is kind of the fiscal air impact on the area too, just on the, on the on the housing prices and. and and I would say also on the community morale. So 
in fact, one neighbor, uh, while we were gone during an open house, she found some people uh, who she thought would be just one.